Well, joining me now is Ben White. He's the author of the new book, Cracks in the Wall, Beyond Apartheid in Palestine, Israel. And to debate him, we have Chaim Selberstein in West Jerusalem, who you saw in Randolph's report. He's the founder and president of Keep Jerusalem, an Israeli public diplomacy organization. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Ben, let me start with you. Why do you think Israel's an apartheid state? Well, very simply, apartheid, as defined in various international conventions, uh, including in the International Criminal Court's Rome Statute, is separation and institutionalized discrimination. Uh, and that's a fair characterization of Israeli policies towards the Palestinians for uh, 70 years now, starting with the uh, ethnic cleansing that took place in the Nakba and the refusal of uh, Israel to allow those refugees to return. Uh, it includes the systematic discrimination faced by Palestinian citizens of Israel uh, who are discriminated against in numerous, uh, numerous ways, land housing, cultural expression, political expression and so forth. It also includes, of course, uh, the situation facing Palestinians in the West Bank under a military regime now for more than half a century, alongside settlers who are Israeli citizens. Um, and it also includes the situation facing Palestinians in East Jerusalem and in the Gaza Strip. Uh, Israel uh, approaches the Palestinians, Israel treats the Palestinians in a way that is uh, characterized by uh, uh, se segregation, institutionalized discrimination, and of course, brutality when Palestinians resist these conditions. Okay, Chaim Solberstein, segregation, separation, institutionalized discrimination and brutality. That's the claim, if the shoe fits, isn't Israel an apartheid state? Well, to quote Senator Moynihan uh, from New York, uh, he said, you're entitled to your own opinions, but you're not entitled to your own facts. And I think uh, the facts that uh, Ben White has brought are just f f part of his imagination. They are not even close to reality. I was born in South Africa. I grew up in an apartheid regime in South Africa, and I know exactly what apartheid means. And I can tell you categorically that nothing that he said is even remotely connected to what is happening in Israel today or historically since the state of Israel has been established. Israel is a free country, a, democ a democracy that uh, grants equal rights to all its citizens. And uh, Arabs, Christians, Jews, and other religions have got freedom of religion, freedom of vote, freedom of, uh, of speech, something that does not exist in any other Middle Eastern country. And uh, everybody knows that uh, that Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. So to come and to make those accusations against Israel can only be the words of an anti-Semite, a bigot, somebody who is using, is hiding behind the screen of pseudo-intellectualism with fake facts, distortion of reality, and exploitation of well-meaning people who are just ignorant about the facts. Okay, so Ben, you're an anti-Semite and a, and a bigot for making your case Israel's a democracy. What are you talking about? I mean, the case that Israel uh, has an apartheid regime with respect to the Palestinians is built on the facts, and I'm, I'm glad that at least the other guest wants to focus on the facts. So, for example, he said he was born in South Africa. He's now an Israeli citizen. Uh, a Palestinian who was expelled in 1948 is unable to return to their homeland simply because they're a Palestinian. Palestinian citizens of Israel are excluded from around 40% of all Israeli communities by the role of so-called admission committees, which filter out potential residents on the basis of so-called social suitability. In fact, it's even the U.S. State Department describes Palestinian citizens of Israel as suffering from, quote, institutional discrimination. Uh, in the West Bank, in uh, roughly 60% of the West Bank, known as Area C, uh, uh, according to uh, an EU official speaking in the Israeli parliament a couple of years ago, between 2009 and 2013, just 2 percent of all Palestinian building permits were accepted by the Israeli occupation authorities. That's in the same area where illegal Israeli settlements continue to expand and thrive. You know, I could go on all day with these statistics. They're well documented by Palestinians, by Israeli human rights groups, by international human rights groups. Uh, and so the only thing that um, uh, Israeli officials and their apologists are left with when faced with these facts is to come out with baseless smears. OK, so Chaim, he's mentioning the occupation, which is a fact. He's mentioning settlements which factually are illegal under international law. Why are you calling him names? Why don't you deal with the facts? First of all, uh, let, when we're talking about Judea and Samaria, the so-called West Bank, Palestinians there live under the... 99% of them live under the Palestinian Authority, and any rights that they have pertain to the Palestinian Authority, and we know very well that the Palestinians there do not have any democratic rights. With inside of Israel, again, 
He is uh, distorting facts. He is making up facts. Israel is a free country. Arabs have representation on the highest levels of all the echelons in Israel, whether it's uh, heads but of you can't uh, contest hospitals, any of my facts. whether it's members of Knesset. I did not, I did not interrupt you. Okay, whether it's uh, members of the Supreme Court in Israel, uh, 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 Salil Jubran was until recently a member of the uh, of the Supreme Court of Israel. Uh, Arab judge George Kara sentenced the previous uh, Israeli president to a jail sentence for for rape. This is just simply to say that the Arabs are discriminated against on the basis of race is a lie. And anybody who says it and continues to say it just exhibits bigotry and anti-Semitism. Okay, let and me I just hate to say that people okay, like Ben are people that Okay, so let me, take, let me take one thing that you said there. So, Ben, part of the argument here, I don't want to go yeah. into the discussion as to whether the West Bank is occupied or not, because then I think no parameters fit whatsoever. So, Chaim, I'm going to move on from that. And for the sake of our viewers, we use international law and international conventions as the sort of acceptable norm. So, West Bank is occupied, whether you believe it or not, but I want to ask Ben then about what Chaim is saying about those Arabs who managed to climb up the ladder within Israeli society to the positions of Supreme Court judges and people who are doing quite well in the society. Doesn't he have a point to say that how can it be apartheid if Arabs are doing so well within Israeli society? First of all, um, unfortunately, of course, the other guest keeps referring to things like uh, quote-unquote anti-Semitism and, and bigotry. Uh, I wonder whether he considers the U.S. State Department to be bigoted and anti-Semitic, referring to the institutional discrimination that Palestinian citizens of Israel face. Uh, and that discrimination exists regardless of uh, how many individual Palestinian citizens of Israel uh, get to a particular position. Of course, this kind of tokenistic approach doesn't actually negate any of the ways in which Palestinian citizens are discriminated against. For example, this week, once again, the Knesset renewed a law that uh, prevents Palestinian citizens of Israel from bringing their spouses uh, to live with them inside Israel to get permanent status. Again, explicitly a law that discriminates against Palestinians. Uh, and also this week, uh, a bill, a draft bill that was proposed um, by uh, members of the uh, joint list that asked for Israel to be defined as a state of all its citizens, as opposed to, quote unquote, a Jewish state, was rejected from even being debated in the Knesset because there is rules that say a, a, a draft bill that rejects Israel's identity as quote unquote right. a Jewish state can't be, uh, can't be debated in the Knesset plenum. So actually, you know, Israel is defiantly and openly not a state of all its citizens. Uh, and just it's, it's quite sad really, although at least instructive for your viewers, to have the other guests just repeat a sort of ad hominem and, and personal smears uh, rather than deal with the facts. Okay, so Chaim, let's look a little closer at that particular bill, right? So the bill is drafted. They want it to uh, be defined as a, Israel to be defined as a state for all of its citizens. They wanted that on the Knesset's agenda. They wanted to anchor in constitutional law the principle of equal citizenship while recognizing the existence and rights of the two Jewish and Arab national groups living within the country. It called for the separation of religion and state while guaranteeing the freedom of worship for all, right? So this is tabled and it's shot down doesn't sound much like the democracy you were talking about, Chaim. It absolutely is. The uh, state of Israel was created as a Jewish and a democratic state. And what the uh, joint list was trying to do was to knock down the de definition of the state of Israel as a Jewish state. That we disagree with. I'm sorry. We have a right to have a Jewish state, just like the United States has got on its currency in God we trust, and there are tens of countries around the world that are de defined as Christian states. You, Israel is a but, Jewish but and on, democratic but, but hold on state. For a second. But Excuse me, let me just finish my sentence. Okay, but in God we trust is, is a slogan. Is, it, is a slogan. We're talking about actual policy vis-a-vis um, law, vis -vis laws well, on the books. I'm saying, it. well, if you, if you let me finish the sentence, being Jewish and democratic is critical to our definition. And by being democratic, we give equal rights to all our citizens Every Arab has a redress in the courts, Israeli courts, and often uh, and continuously win 
in Israeli courts against whether it's so-called discrimination, perceived discrimination, or any other issue that they have. The fact that you have the joint list in the Israeli Knesset, uh, Knesset who are very, uh, uh, against the State of Israel, who support Hamas, many of them, and they have got a free uh, freedom of speech, they can get up at the Knesset and say what they want, and they are not uh, 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 quietened or silenced. Um, the Arabs in Israel prefer to live in Israel than anywhere right. else in the world. A, a, uh, a survey done from Harvard University showed that 77 percent of the Arabs living in Israel prefer to live in Israel than any other country in the world. If there was such discrimination and such a, 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 a hatred of Arabs, then why would they prefer to live in Israel? Okay, but Chaim, you would accept it, that it, the reason it, why. You would accept that it yeah. sounds a bit contradictory to call them Hamas supporters when they're calling for the separation of church and state and guaranteeing freedom of worship for all can't be supporters of fanatics, can they? I, actually, I do believe they are. And what they are doing, in, in, and that is in fact what I think Ben White and his cohorts are doing, is to try and dismantle the state of Israel and certainly the Jewish part of the state of Israel by using democratic and other vehicles because these people, it's not the policies of the state of Israel that they object to, it's the very existence of the state of Israel that they object to. And that is the definition of the BDS movement, which Ben White agrees with and supports. And people like him are trying to use these ways to try and destroy Israel. Okay. You know what? Israel is a strong and democratic state and people like him are not going to succeed. So, Ben, you want to destroy Israel by using democratic means. That's what you want to do. Yeah, I mean, one of the ironies here is that the, the other guests' comments uh, echo the same arguments made by the apologists for the apartheid South African regime. Uh, I mean, it's almost carbon copies sometimes, the idea that, quote, unquote, black South Africans have got a better situation than any other African country. I mean, it's the same sort of rhetoric. I mean, the, the colonial arrogance of these arguments is quite extraordinary. I mean, of course, Palestinian citizens of Israel want to, want to remain there because it's their country. It was Israel that was created on, on top of their towns and villages. Uh, they're not immigrants uh, in, in Israel. Uh, and in fact, actually, members of Knesset, Palestinian members of Knesset, are silenced, contrary to, to, to uh, what Chaim was talking about. Um, Hanin Zabi, for example, has been banned from speaking in the Knesset plenum for particular periods of time uh, for, for standing in solidarity and acting in solidarity with Palestinians uh, in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Um, so with all you're, I mean, all you're really left yes. with is a sort of to you're, all, all you're really sort of left with is a, is a, a tokenistic approach of saying, oh look, we have. Well, I mean, it's actually quite extraordinary to, to say, well, they can vote. I mean, is that is that sort of the standard that, that you want to be proud of that you actually allow them, quote unquote, to vote? Um, the discrimination affects, like I say, land and housing. It affects who they can live with as spouses. It affects political and cultural expression. I mean, again, another story just from this week. Israel's Minister of Culture is, tr is working with the Jerusalem municipality to try and shut down an event, uh, an art gallery in Jerusalem, because that event uh, is a, a book launch for an event about the Nakba, about the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians in 1948. Uh, so, I mean, wherever, wherever you look, I mean, the settlers, again, in the West Bank, I mean, Amnesty International has described the regime in the West Bank as, quote, unique globally with respect to the exclusion of the Palestinians from a planning regime and the existence of a parallel planning re regime for the settlers themselves. Um, so, I mean, like I say, all you're left with is this sort of quite crude, tokenistic approach to saying, well, we have, quote, unquote, an Arab here and an Arab there. Uh, and actually, Israel is defiantly and proudly a Jewish state in its own words, as opposed to a state of all its citizens. So, Chaim, why can't you say... We are Jewish and we are democratic, but let's not militarily occupy the Palestinians and let's not discriminate against them. Can't you do that? Again, uh, the issue of the West Bank is a separate issue. And uh, I actually disagree with what you've both said about the occup occupation, so-called occupation. Hey, I didn't make it up. Illegal and international I mean, law. I, I decide I, as a parameter to you, work with I can, international I can bring law. you... Right. You did. You, you defined that as right. illegal, and I disagree with you. I didn't define it, I can bring it, you sir. many proofs to show that it's the, not illegal. I didn't make but up the talk definition. About, yeah. But you, that's, what, that's right. what you quoted. I'm just telling you that okay. it's, it's incorrect. But okay. my, what I want to talk about is inside Israel. What Ben uh, uh, forgot to say is that the Palestinians that were, that were surveyed were asked whether they prefer to live in a Palestinian state as opposed to the state of Israel. And 80% of them said they preferred not to live in a Palestinian state. Why is that? Because there's apartheid well, why, why, in Israel? Well, yeah, well, like, because exactly. Israel are bigots and bizarre exactly. discriminate? Why is that? 
The reason is that they know exactly what their life would be like under a Palestinian state, and they know what their life is like under Israel. In the state of Israel, they have just, freedom, just a, a, they have democracy, a quick, a quick they, have, a quick they have dignity. They are very happy living in the state of Israel. And the fact that some of the spouses are not allowed into Israel is because of security mm. concerns. And the fact that Israel will not allow certain events to take place in East Jerusalem is for security okay. concerns, not because we discriminate then it's and security not because concerns. we are apartheid, because yeah. we will not allow people to support uh, publicly our enemies okay. like Hamas and like other terrorist uh, entities that Ben White seems to implicitly support. Ben? Okay, Chaim, quick question for you. What kind of Palestinian state do you think Israel should allow to be created in the West Bank? That's irrelevant for me right now. What I want to talk about now is whether Israel is an apartheid well, state. Well, okay, fine, state all right. If you if you think that question's if you, you think I don't think, want to get well, it's let me, another, let me just, let me just another carry on discussion, then. Ben. Right. If you I mean yeah. all right, fine. If you don't if you don't think that's relevant. Um, then it's relevant to the point that you made about the survey of Palestinian citizens of Israel. If you don't want to be drawn on whether you think Israel should allow the creation of a Palestinian state. But the reason, of course, why a Palestinian citizen of Israel would answer in a poll, do, would they prefer to remain Palestinian citizens of Israel or in a so-called Palestinian state, is because they see exactly how Israel would con uh, treat and consider a so-called Palestinian state in the occupied territories. Okay, they see what happens in the West Bank now. They see what happens in, in the Gaza Strip. I mean, the Palestinian Authority that you referred to doesn't actually have any real authority. Israeli occupation forces enter any area of the West Bank at will, do what they please, kill extrajudicially, extrajudicially execute Palestinians when they want, detain Palestinians when they want. And again, Palestinian citizens of Israel uh, even though they face systematic discrimination, enjoy, let's say, the best of Israeli apartheid that exists, right, in comparison to the Palestinian refugees who are not allowed into historic Palestine at all, uh, or in comparison to the Palestinians under a military regime in the West Bank, or, of course, in okay. comparison to the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they, okay, they ben, obviously ben, don't want your to uh, relinquish. Your, your diatribe yeah. just continues. Okay. So your diatribe is not really a diatribe. Have you got an argument from facts. From what you've said, I've got 20 seconds what left on the said, program. So, Chaim, have, you, said, have you got a response? From Chaim, what you've said, seconds. I can see. Yes, I can only conclude that Ben White is a bigot, is an anti-Semite, and is avoiding or dodging I mean, the real facts of Israel. That Israel you is a free and democratic facts. country, and a country that we should okay. be proud to live in and to support. Okay, we're well, back to the beginning then. Ben White and Chaim Silberstein. It's been great having you both on the Newsmakers. I thank you for taking the time to appear on the show.